Hi, welcome to our session, welcome to our channel. Welcome to our channel, Intelligible Tutorials. In this uh, today's session, I am going to give a brief introduction of the email diagrams and introduction part of the email diagrams. In the earlier videos I posted, I had given the introduction of the email and uh, some of the part is completed, but now especially here I want to show the diagrams what is the importance of the email and all these things now I am going to describe once again. Let us see starting from the waterfall model where are the uh, where it is also called as the linear sequential model. So here we are having the multiple number of the steps. The first step and the initial step it is called as the problem identification. Then we are having the requirement gathering and then we are having requirement analysis. After the analysis directly we go to the design. But, but in between the analysis and as well as the design, we have one hidden phase that is called modeling. So what is the importance of the modeling? Already we have seen. So starting from the small shirt, stitching of the small shirt to the construction of the large building, we require modeling, we require a blueprint. So in the same manner, by construction, constructing the large software system also, a blueprint, a model is essential. This kind of the blueprint and this kind of the modeling can be done with the help of the graphical language called unified modeling language. Okay. So, the, the, finally we can emphasize that the modeling is integrated part of the analysis and as well as the design. So, that's why this particular subject is called as the object oriented analysis and design using the peer map. Okay. So, next we see who are the developers of this particular subject. All of you know the acronym of the AML is nothing but Unified Modeling Language and then it was developed by the Rational Software Company. Um, the two inventors, the two scientists who uh, done their, uh, who have contributed more in this end is uh, nothing but, are nothing but Rambach, James Rambach, Grady Butch and Ivor Jacobson. These three are the main uh, scientists who plays a vital role and uh, who have given more contribution in the developing of this unified modeling language. The authors are also there for the book. Next, what are the various contents of the unified modeling language? Actually, it's a graphical language. It contains various graphical symbols like uh, um, diagrams and uh, arrow marks. Like there are so many number of the graphical symbols it can have. Each and every graphical symbol can have its own meaning. And it is, it is working on, it is used for modeling of such a systems. What kind of the systems? The systems which are developed with the help of the object oriented programming languages. The systems which were developed with the help of the object oriented programming languages are called as the object oriented systems. They contain several things, relationships and as well as the diagrams. Now, what are the various kinds of the diagrams? Now we are going to see. Actually, there are nine kind of the diagrams. And among these nine kind of the diagrams, we have two different classifications of the static and dynamic. Static means those are static. That means once we have created, those things will not be changed in the static diagram. Whereas in the dynamic diagram, the things are ever changing in the dynamic diagram. So now let us see what are the various kinds of the static diagrams. See here the class diagrams, object diagrams, component diagrams and as well as the deployment diagrams all these are collectively comes under the static diagrams. Now see what are the various kinds of dynamic diagrams. The very first one is use case diagram, sequence diagram, collaboration diagrams, activity diagrams and state chart diagrams. Here we need to remember one thing that is the sequence and as well as the collaboration diagrams are collectively called as the interaction diagrams. Now see uh, one by one how these diagrams will work now. Now let us start with the use case diagram. Use case diagram is one kind of the diagram which is directly uh, used to represent the functional requirements within the system. What are the functionalities done by the system? And it contains the collection of the actors and use cases and their relationships, how they are represented in the use case diagram. Each and every use case is nothing but the collection of sequential steps. Okay, these collection of the sequential steps again be represented with the help of the sequence diagrams and as well as the collaboration diagrams. So, use case diagrams are comes under the uh, dynamic point of view. Why means 
it is uh, representing the functional requirements these functional requirements of the system is not at all static it always changing the ever changing of the functional requirements can be represented in the use case diagrams the next one is sequence and collaboration diagrams in the sequence and collaboration diagrams how the objects can communicate with each other we can represent easily and these two are can be represented as isomorphic diagrams one form of the diagram can be easily changeable into another form of the diagram the synchronization and the timely communication of the messages can be represented in the sequence diagrams whereas the set of the messages of each and every object can be represented in the collaboration diagram now coming to the state machines or state chart diagrams the object states are not static but the object properties are static for example if we take a person the person can have certain number of the properties the height name age date of birth and address these details may be static but the state of the person is not at all static the state of the person can be changed from one place to the another place throughout the lifetime the object also can change its states can change its behavior these changes of the states and changes of the behaviors can be represented with the help of the state chart diagrams and finally coming to the activity diagrams of the dynamic diagrams see all of you are aware of the flow chart how the flow chart can be represented from the initial state to the end state these flow charts can be represented with the help of the flow charts whereas the activities within the system can be represented with the help of the activity diagram likewise we are having the five number of the diagrams now we are going to talk about the static diagrams those are class the structure of the abstractions can be represented with the class diagrams it is a structural diagram the next one the collection of the classes and the relationships the collection of the classes and interfaces and their relationships can be represented in the class diagram the next one is object diagrams what are the various objects how they are related is represented in the object diagram the next one is component diagram how the components the collection of the packages can be represented in the component diagram the final one is the deployment diagram how the server is connected to collection of the nodes how the lan configuration is represented this is also one kind of the static representation all these things can be represented with the help of the deployment diagram likewise we are having the nine kind of the diagrams and each and every nine kind of the diagrams can have the nine kind of the uh, uses see for a system we can view multiple number of the views each and every stakeholder can have its own his own view or her own view to the system for example the developer can view in the Uh, collection of the classes point of view and objects point of view and the functional requirements uh, can be viewed in the form of the client point of view and the system administrator can view in the deployment point of view likewise here all the views are collected and developed with the help of the nine kind of the diagrams these diagrams can be developed with the views of the multiple stakeholders within the system so these are very important diagrams static diagrams in as well as the dynamic now this diagram represents the use case and collection of the use cases and actors and how it is related to and the next one is object diagram it can be represented as a rectangle the topmost one contains the name of the object and which class it belongs to and the next one is nothing but the relationships the first one is the aggregation composition generalization and association okay so these are the various relationships one relationship is skipped here that is dependency that we will discuss already that we will discuss already in our relationships video just go through that next we talk about the sequence diagram so what is the meaning of the sequence diagram the collection of the objects can communicate with each other with the help of some set of the messages that can be represented in the sequence diagram and the next one collaboration diagram how the set of the objects can communicate with each other with the help of the collaboration diagram these two are same these two are collectively called as the interaction diagrams one form of the diagram can be changed into another form so that's why these are called as isomorphic diagram what is the meaning of the isomorphic is nothing but it can be taken from the chemistry it's a chemical term actually that means the water can be changed into ice and as well as change, ice can be changed into water in the same manner sequence can be changed into collaboration collaboration can be changed into sequence like that these two are the diagrams and the next one is activity diagram how the collection of the activities can be represented what are the conditions in which and the next one is component diagram 
what are the various components can be represented within the system and finally the deployment diagram how the nodes are uh, connected how the nodes are configured how they can be represented like this we can represent so these are the various kinds of the diagrams in the coming videos i this uh, demonstrate how to draw all these kinds of the diagrams the next we are going to talk this is the class diagram we for the the class diagram how the collection of the classes can be represented be with the help of the class diagram okay and this is the final one state chart diagram from the initial to the start starting to the final state how the states can be represented with the help of the state chart diagram here these are the collection of the states and this is the initial state this is the final state and coming to the activity also we are having the initial state and this is the initial state this is the final state like that the activity and state chart diagrams can have initial and as well as the final states so what are the various tools can be used here two types of the tools are there license tool and non license tool or free lead tool coming to the license tool we have ibm rational go stands for rational object oriented software engineering and the next one is microsoft visio these two are the licensed softwares and coming to the next one star ml umbrella like that so many number of the free ways softwares are available for drawing the ml diagrams like that we are having multiple number of the tools in the coming video i start with a freeware tool how to start how to download it how to start it and how to draw the multiple number of the diagrams there we will discuss to watch more videos please subscribe our channel intelligible tutorials and thank you for watching thank you one and all